When it comes to royal related news, does anyone else have to pause for a moment when you remember that we are only in February? If the rest of 2024 is anything like the first two months, it's going to be quite the year. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's take a look at all things royal related from this week. Most days, I advise everyone to ignore GB News and their style of profiting off of creating outrage. But this week, I took a second look. And let me explain why. Several people sent me videos or tagged me in videos of both Angela Levin and Albi Amancona saying that Harry should leave Meghan and come back to the UK. The only real difference between the two videos was that Albi suggested Harry should take the children away from Meghan as well. And the comments that I saw from people who had watched these videos and were justifiably bothered by them said things like, how can anyone advocate for a family being split apart? Or what kind of person thinks that children should be separated from their mother? And well, the UK government does. And that is why I wanted to look at these videos, because while it is easy to dismiss GB News as an unimportant network that spreads misinformation and hate, some of what they are advocating for are the same things that members of the UK government are advocating for, and that should not be ignored. On Tuesday, it was announced that Parliament laid an order banning overseas care workers who are working in the UK from bringing their dependents with them. The decision was celebrated by some as part of the UK's biggest ever cut in migration. Critics of this plan voiced that this will lead to less care workers choosing to come to the UK and hurt an already overburdened system. But that is the point, right? Not allowing care workers, who are more than likely predominantly female, to bring their dependents with them will lead to less of them coming. It seems that Parliament would rather overburden their health care system than to accept more immigrants into their country. And while Meghan is a duchess and not a care worker, she does have two very important things in common with them. She was an immigrant in the UK and a minority, both of which have been deemed unwelcome and unworthy to many. So yes, most of us see the idea of Albie and Angela suggesting Harry leave his wife or take her children from her as appalling, but to those who support far-right ideology, it makes perfect sense. And though the royalists claim that the royal family does not get involved in political affairs, it seems, especially after this past week, that they do. On Wednesday, Charles met with the Prime Minister for the first time this year. The meeting was private, but photos of the visit were released. Since Charles's diagnosis, he has made a point to be seen in public regularly, often being photographed going to church in Sandringham. Perhaps he wants to reassure the public that he is doing well, or maybe he is showing that recovering from an illness doesn't mean you have to be hidden away. William also decided not to be hidden away this week as he attended the BAFTAs last weekend. Royal commentators said that this was a last-minute decision, and he only decided to attend the BAFTAs last Wednesday. I can't imagine what was happening last Wednesday that might have prompted him to decide to go. But whatever the reason, he made an appearance and then quickly made headlines. I talked about William's, as they say, awkward gaffe in another video, but what I didn't mention was how both disappointing and fascinating it is that he managed to mess this up. Some people have questioned how William's team didn't prepare him better, while others are saying that this is just another example of William ignoring the notes he was given ahead of time. But at this point, I think they're all to blame. William is a 41-year-old billionaire whose only job is to shake hands, take photos, and make conversation. And if he hasn't figured out how to do that successfully at this point, then he isn't going to. The prince who makes the so-called awkward gaffes will be the king who makes the awkward gaffes, and excuses will still be made for him. But if conversations aren't William's thing, then perhaps he can fall back on the grand promises he has made over the years, as this week he tried to tackle two of them at once, bringing peace to the Middle East and ending homelessness. On Sunday, it was announced that William plans to build 24 homes for those experiencing homelessness on Duchy land. For the project, he will be working with a Cornish charity, St. Petrox, as they provide wraparound support to those living in the homes. The homes are said to be high-quality, temporary accommodations for those in need, with the building set to begin in September of this year. 
but William's plan has been met with some criticism. This article from Byline Times lays out many of the concerns, quoting multiple Cornish leaders, as well as the CEO of the anti-monarchy group Republic, Graham Smith. Smith points out that the Duchy estate is not William's personal property, but the Crown's, and these 24 temporary homes, along with any other homes built by Duchy money, would not be donated to the people in need. Instead, those people would pay rent for them, and that rent would go back to the duchy as profit. The homes would essentially become another asset of the Duchy of Cornwall, which already owns more than 52,000 acres of land, numerous properties, and is valued at over £1 billion. It also pays out a yearly salary to William of around £22 million. From this perspective, William making a profit off of these homes would only further the income disparity problems, and as Smith says, makes William more a part of the problem than the solution. But William had other solutions this week as well. On Tuesday, he released a statement that had the UK media unsure how to react. The statement on the conflict in the Middle East is very carefully worded and approved by the Foreign Office and comes across as a way to both sides this issue. It was also interestingly released the day before Parliament voted on whether or not to call for a ceasefire. Aside from looking at if William should have published the statement or not, two other things stood out to me. This statement, excluding the Princess of Wales, feels odd, especially at a time when Kensington Palace's comms team has to know that people are expressing concern over not seeing or hearing from her in two months. She may be recovering, but she can still have an opinion, correct? Also, shouldn't a statement like this, addressing a major world conflict, come from the monarch himself? William is, of course, allowed to have an opinion, but the monarchy has always wanted to present a united front, with all members falling in line behind the monarch. William releasing what feels like a rogue statement just further perpetuates the suspicion that the divide between Buckingham Palace and Kensington Palace is deep. In conjunction with his statement, William also visited the local Red Cross to do more listening and learning. According to his official Twitter account, it says that he wanted to hear more about the human impact of the ongoing conflict in the Middle East. And it is statements like this why I have a hard time taking him seriously. This conflict is going on five months, and the details of the human suffering have been all around us. You would have to actively try to not know what was going on at this point. So the timing of his statement, his sudden interest in discussing the conflict, it feels less than genuine. And while I am unsure of whether William's efforts are genuine or not, he does have a pattern of returning to the public eye whenever Harry and Meghan receive media attention. And the media coverage of them from last week has continued into this week, with the couple sharing with people a previously unseen photo of the two of them from their dinner Friday night in Vancouver. But this wasn't the only new photo, at least of Megan, that we saw this week. Yesterday, she was photographed leaving lunch in Beverly Hills with her friend, wedding dress designer, and former artistic director of Givenchy, Claire Wake Keller. And she was spotted again at dinner last night in Studio City with Terry Wood, the executive director for Harpo Productions. There has been much speculation online as to whether these meetings were personal or work-related, but whatever the reason, it is always nice to see Megan out and about looking happy and creating a fashion moment. And my favorite royal-related moment of the week came from Megan as well, with her dedication of a new wing at Mayhew Animal Home in the UK. The wing, named in honor of Megan's late friend and animal advocate, Ollie Just, was made possible by a donation for Megan through the Archwell Foundation. For the opening of the wing, Megan sent a video message as well. Ollie introduced her to Mayhew in 2019, and as we know, she served as the patron for three years, with her patronage ending in 2022. And that is the part that stood out to me the most. Megan has every justifiable reason in the world to walk away from anything UK-related and never look back. But she hasn't. She has continued to support multiple organizations from afar, and that in itself says so much about her character, her heart, and why the world continues to be so fascinated with her.